welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood biography artist, and today I'm going to quickly show you how I used only hot air to burn a 20 by 24 Corvus Nebula. The whole uh, burning process with the hot air took 13 hours, but I really had to speed up those videos <laughs> just to get it done. So I'm using both the torch in uh, hot air tip and the Pro Stormer soldering hot gun, hot air gun. I'll put timestamps down in the description if you want to skip the burning part because you already know about it because you've watched the lives. And I will come back when it's the next step. So stick around. I know where you're coming from A long road and the money's gone All the games where you played your part From the very start just to come this far You should know I believe in you Every race you run, you're my number one Kick it up now and bring it on Now to rock this town You don't really need to play it low Just get up and go This is all your show You should know I believe in you Every race you run You're my number one Kick it up now and bring it And we're back. All right, on to the next step. I need to drill holes. This is a huge project and I want lights. So the only way to get lights is to drill holes. I use my Dremel and several tiny tips, uh, drill bits to do it. What you're seeing here was my test board because I did a test board first to see what kind of problems I'd have to worry about. Unfortunately, I didn't film the my big piece having the dr holes drilled but that's all right you get the point so i'm drilling a bunch of holes um, for this project i think i ended up with like 50 holes and i want the lights to look like stars so i'm taping to make sure i don't split the wood and i did start um, poking pilot holes but because this is so thin and the bits are so small i actually didn't have to do that but I only would have learned that by doing the test board first. All right, the holes have been drilled. That's what it looks like here. Now, four, five, and six. Step four was spraying workable fixative. Step five was splattering a bunch of white, tiny acrylic stars. And then step six goes into painting the edge. I tried to use the heat gun on the edge, did not like the outcome. So I ended up having to paint. I painted on clear gesso first that I tinted and that way the wood didn't just soak up the paint and have to do a whole bunch of layers. 
and then I custom mixed a brown that is as close to the burning as I could get that way it all fit together the sides don't overly stand out in fact there's some um, more stars that are splattered on that actually went to the edge so that is where we're at now Alrighty, step seven. Now I want to put in a disclaimer right now. There is a much easier way to do this. And I definitely figure that out later. But because this piece is for an art show, I did not have any more time to make the adjustments. Just doing this piece took a good three weeks and I was at the end of my time crunch before the piece was due to be delivered to Coconino Center for the Arts. So I know there's a much easier way to do this, but I'm gonna show you how I did it this time. Lesson learned. So I'm using fiber optics to connect to the lights, to bring the light through the holes and keep it steady. Now, I intentionally made the fiber optics really long because down the road, if a client needs me to switch out the lights I can just trim it off a little bit and attach two new lights to it without having to redo all the lighting system now my hands were more tied because this had to be battery operated instead of being plugged in to the wall so that's why I was even more limited I used tape to make a couple of lights a different color like the Corvus uh, constellation I used the actual stars color between uh, blue and I believe orange and yellow plus white uh, for those stars and then there's a bigger star off on the other corner that's a blue star and I colored that one as well so again there is a much easier way to do this and I do want to read do another piece with lights like this where I have more time and I can really work everything out. So I know it's a mess, but everything fits in there. And then I cut a foam core back in order to cover everything. And now we're already on to step eight, the last step, seven layers of varnish. And here's where I made my first mistake. In my head, the diamond dust should have glittered through the varnish. So I was applying the diamond dust to the first two layers. Does not work that way. Turns out diamond dust needs to be your last, in within your last coat. So again, I'm popping up right here. I, I messed it up, learned the hard way, but it works on the final piece. So I didn't lose my head over that. Panicked a little bit, calmed myself down, and went on to brushing on my varnish. This Liquitex gloss varnish is awesome. I didn't have to sand in between coats and I could do as many coats as I wanted. In fact, it almost looks like a resin finish because of all the coats that I put on it.
So after this, the piece is going to be all done and I will show you the final piece now. It's all finished. So I attach the remote and the ribbon and two magnets and it hangs directly below where you activate the lights. Why did you point it in the right place? Yeah, I don't know. It was already off. <laughs> so that so people don't lose the remote, especially during the show. And it detaches. So if somebody doesn't want it on there anymore, they can take it off. And it's all done and I'm so happy. I'm actually really happy with it. I'm pretty proud of myself for figuring things out because I it took a long time to think about how I wanted to do this piece. Now there was one last hard thing to do with this and that's taking a photo or getting the video to show how sparkly it really is because in person that diamond dust is like mwah, it just brings it out and you can see that finish. Now here's the lights in the dark so if you just want to run it as a nightlight you actually can. There's a hole cut out in the back of the foam board that you can lift up, switch out the batteries in the battery pack and put it right back together. You don't, nobody has to worry about unscrewing the whole of the foam core and messing with all that stuff. I try to make it very easy for the batteries to be replaced. So look at all that shimmer. I know it's hard to see, but it really is there. And this is at the art show, the opening of Night Visions. It was the first time I'd been um, had a piece in Night Visions. I normally do It's Elemental. But in my brain, I wanted to do a big wood burning, but I needed to do it quickly. So these are the main tools that I used, plus a few extra, to get this done. And I actually am really happy with it. So what do you think? Let me down, know down in the comments if this is something you'd like to do. I will link the uh, hot air gun that I used. Plus I have a couple of lives using that hot air gun plus making masks. So happy burning everybody.